This is the Emergency Medical Minute. All right, welcome to your Medical Minute for tonight. So it's an interesting patient that we can talk about. So it was a young male who presented, young male in his 30s who presented complaining of lots of vomiting. He said, I vomited 25 times today, and now I'm so weak I can't get up out of my chair. And I saw him initially, he was in a wheelchair, said he couldn't get up, which I thought was unusual for a relatively young guy. He also was um, chugging water in the waiting room and asking for uh, candy, I think, to eat. So we got back here, treated him with labs. He had like four apple sauces and two Gatorades and kept asking for more to eat and drink. And so I thought he did a pretty good job with his nausea. But then when it was time to go, he said, I can't walk, can't get up, can't walk. So I thought it was really odd. So what, next step, what do you think? I'm not saying it over. Course. You're not going to say it because you were here? <laughs> no. But no so the next that. step we took, maybe a little bit unusual, we didn't do a CT of his belly for the vomiting. We did a CT of his uh, head and neck, CT angiogram, head and neck. And he had a positive finding on his head CT. So any guesses now, now that you know he has vomiting, says he can't walk, and has a positive head CT. So he actually had a left cerebellar stroke. And when, unusual, 37-year-old no guy, right? So uh, when we went back and took more history, he said, yeah, it was a pretty acute onset of um, symptoms actually several days prior. Felt like he couldn't walk, felt like he was kind of dizzy, and then was vomiting, although he denied a true vertigo-type symptom. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about cerebellar strokes. We don't see them nearly as often. It's part of the posterior circulation. That makes up about 20% of strokes overall, but we know those are the ones that we disproportionately miss because they're often more subtle because it's like dizziness or my neck hurts or I have some double vision, and, and it's easier for us to ignore those symptoms a little bit. About 10% of those, depending on what you look at, will be a cerebellar stroke. So what, what would be the classic symptoms of a cerebellar stroke? Dizziness. Yep, dizziness. So dizziness, ataxia, you know, kind of walking like a drunken sailor, falling to one side, and, um, and vomiting. And one of the things about cerebellar strokes is unlike uh, an anterior circulation strokes, it's actually the same side lesion that you fall to. So we know if you stroke your cerebral cortex on the left, you're going to have right motor deficits. But if you stroke your cerebellum on the left, you're going to have left side deficits. So we don't have time to do kind of a comprehensive study, but I wanted that, or a comprehensive review, but I wanted to talk about some of the physical findings that you would see because they can be subtle. So one, everybody knows this, this diet, uh, dysdiadocokinesis. Anybody know what that is? So that's difficulty with your rapid alternating movements. And the way you test that is usually say to the patient, do this as fast as you can. And typically on the side where they have a cerebellar lesion, they'll have trouble. They'll be like, oh, I can't do it. That's difficult, even though they don't have weakness in the arm. So that's an important one to check. Dysmetria, anybody know what dysmetria is? It's when you have them do the finger to nose, and they and they miss your finger. They usually go wide and go past your finger, and then they and then they try to correct. Um, dysmetria can also be of the legs, and interestingly, you don't have to have both. So some some patients will be rock stars on their finger to nose, but then they can't do their heel to shin at all, and that's a sign of a cerebellar stroke. Um, you can also have limb ataxia that might only come out when they do tasks. So you can't pick up anything on exam, but they say, yeah, I can't button my clothes or I can't hold my coffee cup because it's too hard. And that can be a sign of a cerebellar stroke. Uh, intention tremor, which is a little bit different. They don't go wide and past your finger. They actually do this targeting thing where if that's my finger, they're like, can't get it, can't get it, can't, almost there. And they kind of go back and forth. Um, they can actually have a different type of dysarthria where they have this really robotic kind of monotone speech. And it's actually not the speech centers that are affected, but they're actually having ataxia of their mouth parts, which is kind of weird. And then the last one would be finding nystagmus. So, you know, anytime you have a patient that's just not coming together and they have refractory vomiting that's not resolving here, I know we see a lot of cyclical vomiting syndrome patients, but you should just kind of have on your checklist, could there possibly be something going on in their head? Because occasionally we sur we're surprised like with this young guy. That's it. Thanks. Emergency Medical Minute is and always will be about free medical education. Medicine's most prolific podcast is successful because of our supporters, donors, and of course, our listeners. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you support spreading free medical education, please donate at our website, emergencymedicalminute.com. As always, keep listening.